So most people have experiences in their life that brand them emotionally. They feel fear, they feel anger, they feel bitterness, they feel frustration, they feel insecurity. And those emotions then become part of their identity. In this mind-blowing episode, Dr. Joe Dispenza helps us to tune into our future and begin to manifest everything that our hearts desire. Where we place our attention is where we place our energy. So it is time to invest your energy into your new future by remembering what your future holds and thinking about it before it happens. Dr. Joe Dispenza shares the secrets of how to bring new manifestation while we may be stuck in the memories of our past. You'd have to become aware of your unconscious habits and behaviors and even what you say and modify them. And then you'd have to look at those emotions that keep you anchored to the past and decide if those emotions belong in your future. So most people try to create a new personal reality as the same personality and it doesn't work. We literally have to become someone else. So the question then is, can you believe in a future that you can't see or experience with your senses yet, but you've thought about enough times in your mind that your brain is literally changed to look like the experience has already occurred. You have to feel wholeness in order for your healing to occur. Uh, we have to feel love for ourselves and love for life in order for us to have love in our life. And so then to instruct people how to teach their body emotionally how that future could feel like before it's made manifest, if they do it properly, their body as the unconscious mind begins to believe it's living in that future reality in the present moment and they're beginning to signal new genes in new ways that begins to change their body to look like the event has already occurred. That's your compass because that feeling is going to drive your behaviors. It's going to drive more of those thoughts and when you feel that feeling and it's visceral, no person no thing, no experience will stand in the way between you and that vision. And you will be initiated by the universe into wealth. You will be initiated into health. So then what does it take to break that energetic field? An energy that's greater than the energy that's holding it together. That's how you separate atoms that become a molecule. You, they're bound by an invisible field of energy that's keeping them connected. So you got to use a greater energy than the energy that's holding them together to separate them. Well, in order for you to change then, you can't have energy without awareness or consciousness. You got to go to a greater level of consciousness and change your energy. And nobody changes until they change their energy. And when they change their energy, they change their life. You may say, well, this person, you know, I use my enemy to reaffirm my addiction to hatred. I use my coworker to reaffirm my addiction to judgment. I use my ex to reaffirm my addiction to resentment. That we have these different people in our lives that we need to remind us of who we think we are. The enemy dies and you find another one. Our life begins to change when we change our energy and, and we begin to take our power back that's essential for us to begin to create. Now some people can't handle that because they're not conscious that they're doing it. So they'll be working on their vision of the future, and yet they'll spend two hours lowering their energy back into victimization or suffering, and they want to know why their future isn't happening. Well, there's an unconscious program. Let's go after that. And once you start going after that, now all of a sudden your life starts to change again. So you can't say it doesn't work. On some level, we don't work. And if you're really invested in this, the question is, what is it about me? Where am I directing my attention or my energy? Who am I using to reaffirm some conditioning that I need to remember as my old self? How bad does it have to get? To what lowest level do you have to reach before people really make up their mind to change? My message is, why wait? I mean, when you're feeling so altered emotionally, you feel so bad, that's the moment you could actually see yourself for the first time because you're, you're not you're answering your cell phone, you're not responding to all your texts, you're not watching TV, you're not going out to dinners, you're not calling people back. You're, something's altered in you and you're starting to become self-aware. If you're waking up every day and you're combining a clear intention with an elevated emotion and you're changing your emotional state to be elevated, you could still see the old self, 
from an elevated point of view and be stay conscious than from a limited point of view. And that's what I want for people. Like, let's go. I mean, what do you got to lose? What people are going to start wondering, like, did you change your medication? What's up with that guy? Something's different about him. You're not predictable any longer. Let me say to our, our community, you know, when you're changing, you just stop talking about it. You're just too busy being it. Something's happening. The repetition of getting a few days in a row of that really well. I always say, God, if you had a great meditation, you wake up feeling better at the end of that meditation than when you started. And you do that the next day. And then the next day, you're going to start feeling better all the time. And that your body's going to start feeling better and everything's going to start feeling better. And you're going to start feeling better about life. So then whatever it takes for you to move into a state of being. And what is a state of being? Thoughts are the vocabulary of the brain. Feelings are the vocabulary of your body. How you think and how you feel creates your state of being. So then if you wake up in the morning and you come back to your senses with a clean slate and you say, I don't feel anything. You say, well, let me start thinking about all the problems in my life. Well, all those problems are connected to different people or different objects or things at different times and places. The moment you remember your problems, a memory is a record of the past. You're thinking in the past. Every one of those problems has an emotion associated with them. So all of a sudden you start feeling unhappy. You start feeling bitter. You start feeling frustrated. So now your body's in the past. So then most people then create a state of being that's connected to their past. And if they're in the familiar past, then they are going to crave the predictable future and they're going to fall back into routine. We want people then to get very clear on that vision of their future, however they do it, and begin to combine that clear intention with an elevated emotion. And the stronger the emotion they feel from the vision they're creating, the more altered they feel inside of them, the more they're going to pay attention to the pictures in their mind. And now they're remembering their future. I want our people, our students, to bond and fall in love with their future just like they do with somebody else. And when you're bonded to your future, no person, no circumstance, no thing is going to remove you from it. So then, if you fall from grace during the day, then the next question is, what person, what circumstance caused me to disconnect from my love in the future? And let me rehearse in my mind if I have that same circumstance how I'm going to overcome it. And now you're worthy of love. It's no longer the person or the event. It's just you're doing what it takes to stay in the emotion of your future. Your, your, your body is aligned emotionally to that future. So great doing it with the meditation. That's easy. But now the real game is open your eye. You open your eyes and be in the initiation of life and stay in that place and just know that your future is going to happen.